Quick clarification on last week's episode, which was episode five, Homestead Without a Homestead, specifically regarding rainwater harvesting. I mentioned that it rains hard every day here in Florida. What I meant to say is it rains hard every day during the summer in Florida. Just wanted to clarify that. If it rained hard year round, we would probably have even more issues with Lake Okeechobee. (laughs) Okay, that is all. Welcome to the Florida Gardener Podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer, and today is all about my favorite flowering shrubs for hot, humid gardens. For many, Florida evokes images of palm trees and lush green vegetation. But what many do not know is Florida was actually named by explorer Ponce de Leon in 1513, and the name Florida comes from the Spanish word florido, which means full of flowers or flowery. There are many options when it comes to adding color to your yard, and the best part? None of the flowering shrubs we will discuss today require irrigation, synthetic fertilizers, or pesticides. That's right. None of these shrubs require irrigation, synthetic fertilizers, or pesticides. Now regarding irrigation, there are two caveats when it comes to this. Number one, all plants require frequent watering for the first few weeks while they're becoming established. After all, you did just yank them out of a pot, and now they have to readjust to life in their new home. But after three to four weeks, they shouldn't require any type of irrigation system or hand watering. And number two, this only applies to plants growing in the ground. Anything planted in a pot will require hand watering or a drip system, as their roots are restricted within the container. Okay, so let's get on with it. Number one on the list is fire spike. If I had to describe what fire spike looks like in four words, I would say large majestic red salvia. It's a gorgeous eye-catching shrub with ruby red flower spikes and glossy green leaves. It blooms off and on all year. The striking tubular flowers are a magnet for hummingbirds and butterflies. What I also love about this plant is it'll bloom with any type of sun exposure full sun to full shade, and it's easily maintained at four to five feet. There's also a less common purple variety of fire spike, which is gorgeous as well. Number two is thryallis. Thryallis adds a soft golden touch to any Florida landscape. Its tiny foliage and yellow flowers may appear delicate, but don't let this plant fool you. It's extremely hardy, versatile, and will provide bursts of gorgeous yellow color year round. Thryallis does best in full sun to partial sun. It doesn't do well in very shady areas. And though it can reach five to six feet, it can be kept three feet tall with trimming. Number three is one of my favorites, plumbago. It is just so whimsical and playful. There are few plants that produce blue flowers. It's a rarity in the plant space, and this guy produces tons of them. So Plumbago certainly wins an award for being unique. There's also a white variety of Plumbago. Plant the white and blue together for a fresh, clean look that is perfect for a soft, cool-colored garden. Now, I tend to have a wilder, natural style of gardening, but for those that prefer a more formal or controlled aesthetic, this is a shrub you may want to skip. The plumbago plant has a spreading, rambling habit that works best in an informal or cottage-style garden. Every now and again, it benefits from a trim. While it can grow much larger, it looks best when kept in bounds. It also needs full sun to part sun if you really want to max out the flower power. Number four is blue porterweed. Although called blue porterweed, the flowers on this plant looks more purple to me. Either way, this is another fantastic, low-maintenance flowering shrub for the Florida garden. This plant has quirky, swirly stems. Its flowers appear partway up the funky, upright stems and attract bees and butterflies. While the flowers on blue porterweed don't stand out as much or aren't as conspicuous as all of the other shrubs on this list, it's still a wonderful addition to the garden given the fact that it blooms off and on the entire year and it's very flexible with regards to sun exposure, happily blooming in anything from full sun to partial shade. You can keep this lady easily maintained at two and a half to three feet. 
If you have lived in Florida any amount of time, I can almost guarantee you've been somewhere that was landscaped with Exora, which is number five on the list. It's commonly used in standard residential and commercial Florida landscapes. Now, because of this, many longtime Florida residents are underwhelmed by them. And that is why I'm here to say, there are no bad plants, just bad landscapes. You wouldn't believe how many times I've sworn off a plant Crotons specifically come to mind, and then I'll see it done well, like really well, and I have to eat crow. That's when I realize there are no bad plants, just poorly designed landscapes. It's like anything else. Adding a clove of minced garlic to your chocolate cake recipe probably isn't going to fare well, but add that same clove of minced garlic to your marinara sauce, and it's banging. Anyway, I digress. So when it comes to Exora, there are larger varieties and there are dwarf varieties. Both are known for their showy clusters of flowers which bloom almost nonstop. We are going to specifically discuss the dwarf Exora here because that is my favorite. It's a bite-sized compact flowering shrub. You don't have to worry too much about it because they are slow growers, easily kept at two feet or less. The dwarf variety has small leaves like boxwood and blossoms cover almost the entire plant. It really is incredible. They come in a nice selection of colors too, including bright red, orange, yellow, pink, and white. Exora requires full to partial sun to produce the most flowers. They bloom heavily during the warm months and then off and on through cooler weather. I think one of the big misses with dwarf Exora and some of the other Exora varieties is everyone styles Exora into a perfect square shape. It's a flowering shrub. Let it do its dang thing and be a bit freer and have the ability to really show off its blooms. I'm not saying you can't trim it. All of these shrubs on the list benefit from occasional trimming, but there's a difference between that and giving it a buzz cut. Now, don't get me wrong. If you want a manicured look, there are tons of shrubs that look fabulous, sculpted, and shaped with clean lines. Podocarpus immediately comes to mind. Eugenia is another one. It's actually used a lot for topiaries down here, but Exora just isn't one of them. And I think that's why we don't like the way they look or appreciate them. So for number six, we are going to play the same game we did with number one, which was Fire Spike. If I had to describe what Panama Rose looks like in four words, I would say pink pentas on steroids. Panama Rose looks so similar to pentas that they were given the name Bush Penta. Low maintenance Panama Rose blooms nearly year round with bright pink flower clusters that attract butterflies. This fast grower can be kept at three feet tall with regular trimming and it grows almost anywhere in full sun to part shade. It's one of the most consistent flowering shrubs and it thrives in hot sunny spots. The flowers have a light daytime scent which grows stronger in the evening. So while not a true rose, I can certainly understand how it got its name. What's not to love about this guy? Okay, so number seven is called Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow, and it really has to be one of the coolest plants on the list. It is by far one of the most interesting and unique plants that we are discussing today because it has multicolored flowers. Its name comes from the flowers that open purple, fade to lavender, and then white, with all colors present at the same time on this gorgeous shrub. You can keep this little lady trimmed to four to six feet tall once it's mature. And while it will grow in full sun, she seems to prefer part sun to part shade. Whether you buy it or not, this really is a plant worth Googling. Now, number nine on this list is bougainvilleas. Bougainvilleas can be a bit polarizing. What I found is that the people that typically hate them moved into a home that had an existing neglected bougainvillea that became massive and unmanageable or it was planted in the wrong place. These guys need full sun. There are no exceptions with this one if you want flowers. Full sun, period. And yes, it has thorns. But if you choose the right area for planting, select the correct variety of bougainvillea, and wear gloves when you handle this plant, you won't have any issues. What many do not realize are bougainvillea come in a ton of different shapes and sizes. Tree form, large shrubs, medium shrubs, dwarf shrubs, and even vines trained on a trellis. It's all about finding the one that is best for you in your space. We have all seen the very large bougainvilleas, 
And when they are in full bloom, the flower show is spectacular. I especially love the lavender flowering ones. These large bougainvilleas can get up to 20 feet. And they're available in a rainbow of color choices. Red, pink, purple, white, orange, yellow, and many shades in between. But if that's too much for your space, which I would say yes, it probably is if you're planting one in your backyard, these are best in larger commercial landscapes. Consider a mid-sized bougainvillea or a dwarf variety. The mid-size can be kept at about six feet tall and the dwarf can be kept at three feet, making them small enough to even work as a front of the border plant. Dwarf bougainvilleas have thorns, but because they're smaller overall than full-size varieties, they won't tear you to bits. Helen Johnson is a very popular dwarf variety. And here's a little secret. The colorful parts of the bougainvillea are actually not flowers. They are flower bracts. The flower is actually the teeny tiny white blossom, which is encircled by the colorful flower bracts. All right, I'm throwing in a bonus shrub here, which is jasmine. There are many types of jasmine, large, small, trailing, but they all produce white flowers. White and green are neutral colors in a landscape, so this is a plant that fits well into almost any space. I'm especially fond of downy jasmine. It's a white cascading shrub best for informal landscapes. What I love about all jasmines are they are versatile. There's a jasmine for almost any type of space, and they're not choosy when it comes to light conditions, blooming in anything from full sun to partial shade. Some even bloom in full shade. All right. That wraps up episode six of The Florida Gardener. We will see you next week for episode seven. And in the meantime, if you'd like to download one of my Etsy garden templates or check out my social, you can access everything through my website, rootsredefined.com. That's roots, R-O-O-T-S, redefined, R-E-D-E-F-I-N-E-D.com. All right, thanks guys. We'll see you again soon.